Greetings. My name is Dr. Alexander Egbe. I am a congenital cardiologist and an assistant professor of medicine and pediatrics at Mayo Clinic. I'll be speaking about the Mayo Clinic Fontan program, which is a comprehensive approach to a complex problem. In the first part of this talk, I will describe the Fontan operation and also give you a general overview of the medical problems faced by the adult Fontan patient. I will then move on to introduce the Mayo Clinic Fontan model as it relates to patient care, patient education, and high quality research. What is the Fontan operation? To understand this operation, we need to understand the blood flow pattern in a normal heart. In a normal heart, deoxygenated blood or blue blood returns to the right side of the heart. It is pumped by the right ventricle into the lungs where it gets oxygenated and returns as pink blood to the left side of the heart. The normal heart is designed in a way that the blue blood should never mix with the pink blood. But this is not the case in patients with single ventricle anatomy. Single ventricle anatomy is a complex type of congenital heart disease in which there is mixing of blue and pink blood inside the heart. And this results in a condition known as cyanosis, otherwise known as being blue. There is also an increased risk for stroke, infection, heart failure, and death in these patients. The Fontan operation is a complex open heart surgery that was invented in the early 1970s. This operation was designed to completely separate the blue blood from the right side of the heart from the pink blood in the left side of the heart. The goal of this surgery was to overcome all the problems of the single ventricle that I have described. This operation has evolved and improved significantly in the last four decades. Unfortunately, in spite of the improvement in the surgical technique, the patients who have had Fontan operation have significantly reduced life expectancy compared to the general population. Most adult Fontan patients usually die in their 30s and 40s, in contrast to 70s and 80s in the general population. The question is why? The Fontan patients die because of a group of medical problems which we now commonly refer to as Fontan-associated diseases. These medical problems include arrhythmias, which means abnormal heart rhythm, thromboembolism, which means blood clot, liver disease, pulmonary vascular disease, which is a disease of the small blood vessels in the lungs, protein losing enteropathy or PLE, which is a disease of the gut, and heart failure. So far, I have described the Fontan operation and I've given you a brief overview of the medical problems faced by the adult Fontan patient. Let us move on now to discuss the Mayo Clinic Fontan program. The Mayo Clinic was one of the hospitals to adopt the Fontan operation in North America when it was newly described. As a result, more than 1,100 Fontan operation has been performed at our site, yielding more than four decades of experience in managing this disease. As we all know, Mayo is known for its excellent doctors and unique collaborative culture. Innovation and cutting edge research are also part of the DNA of this organization. It is based on these unique building blocks that we've created a platform to launch the Mayo Clinic Fontan program. This is a comprehensive program with special emphasis on patient care, 
high quality research and education, and I will speak briefly about each of these in the next few slides. Let's start from patient care. Our aim is to use multidisciplinary team approach in management of these patients. This is important because of the diverse medical problems faced by this population. In this care model, the congenital cardiologist is no longer the sole provider of care, but is more or less the coordinator of care. Other major pillars of this model include the cardiac surgeon, the interventional cardiologist, and the heart rhythm specialist. This is very important because of the ongoing need for surgical and interventional procedures, as well as dealing with problems of abnormal heart rhythm. Liver disease is being increasingly recognized in the Fontan patients and affects about one third of all Fontan patients. To rise up to this challenge, we have enlisted the service of two liver specialists who are very familiar with management of liver disease in Fontan patients. Additionally, we've created practice protocols specifically addressing the, the individual problems of the Fontan patients. We believe that this approach will ensure the highest quality uh, patient care for our population and also create avenue for quality improvement. Moving on to education, let's start with patient education. We intend to educate the patient face-to-face -face during their routine clinic visit. We will also provide ongoing support for any questions or concerns that they have in their day-to-day -day life. The goal is to create an informed patient population who will be empowered to direct their own cardiac care. The world is evolving and the social media is now the strongest communication platform. In order to increase our effectiveness and expand our reach, we recently launched the Mayo Clinic Fontan Facebook page. This Facebook page was created with two primary objectives. The first objective is to disseminate medical science to the patients. What we do is that we comb through the literature for all high quality research for every month, focus on the Fontan. We now write a brief abstract in layman's terms about the findings of this study. So this Facebook page is supposed to be a one-stop shop where you can get scientifically sound information in a format that you can understand and free from all bias. The second objective is to create a safe avenue for patients to interact with each other. By so doing, each patient will gain a unique perspective by interacting with other patients who are, who are going through the same problems on a day-to-day basis. In addition to patient education, we will also educate the providers. We will do this by maintaining national and international presence in the different professional meetings and scientific sessions. Education deals with discussing what is known. Research, on the other hand, focuses on that which is unknown. Here at the Mayo Clinic, we've been at the forefront of Fontan research. We've leveraged the wealth of experience gathered over 40 years of managing this disease, and we've published extensively on almost all the medical problems faced by the adult Fontan patients. In this continuum of growth, we are gradually moving from retrospective study towards conducting prospective studies. This is made possible by the Fontan Registry that was launched in 2015. The Fontan Registry is a prospective database that tracks real time all outcomes of adult Fontan patients followed at Mayo Clinic. 
we hope that in years to come, information from this database will help provide answers to most of the pressing problems faced by our patients. Finally, we intend to go beyond the confines of Mayo Clinic by initiating and encouraging collaboration with other congenital heart disease centers of excellence in the United States and beyond. We believe that multi-center collaboration will create the kind of synergy required to accelerate research in this field. This is where we are right now. We have this unacceptable gap in life expectancy of our patients compared to everyone else. And also, the quality of life is not the greatest. By giving high quality patient care, research, and pro proper education of the patient and the providers, the overarching goal of this Fontan program is to bridge the gap in life expectancy and also improve the quality of life of our patients so that most of their time will be spent having a good time instead of being on the hospital bed. This will be a difficult mission and will require input from everybody, starting from you, the patient. Thank you very much for listening and please feel free to email your question or concerns.